welcome back to Incredible Inverts and Other Animals with me, Phil. And today is a very special day now. Happy Halloween for last night. Hope you all had a, a good Halloween. Now originally I was planning to do another Halloween sort of video. And stuff, um, but today is actually kind of a special day now. So 1st of November, this is the first ever World Stick Insect Day. So we're actually kicking off with celebrating stick insects now this is an idea that a friend of mine at another zoo has come up with and a few people have joined in with this I thought well I need to do a video on stick insects I haven't yet I do keep stick insects and stick insects are fantastic little things so let's have a bit of a celebration of stick insects let's take a look okay so here we have some stick insects or phasmids now phasmids is the word that we tend to use within the hobby and this is what all stick insects are referred to as. And this word comes from ancient Greek. It essentially translates as phantom or apparition or ghost. So they're like the ghosts of the forest or the phantoms of the forest. Because the idea is that you can't see them. Their camouflage is so good, so great that they look like foliage. They look like sticks. But they're not. They're animals. And there's almost 3,000 species of stick insect that we currently know of to science. And as many of those are now kept and bred in captivity, and a lot are kept as pets. Now, because there's around 3,000 species of stick insect, obviously they come in many shapes, sizes, and colours. Some of them are green, some of them are brown, like these guys here. And these ones, these volvums, actually have orange wings and can fly really well. Not all species of stick insect can fly, but some can. They also eat various leaves. So a lot of species will eat things like bramble and some and also privet. So these guys here, the fulvums, eat privet and some only eat privet. Uh, but a lot will eat a wide variety of leaves. So for the most part, most stick insects are fairly easy to cater for in terms of food. So a lot of it is free of charge that we just have to go out looking for it and cutting it ourselves. Making sure that we collect from places of no pollution, so not next to, to roadsides. So, a lot of them will do fairly well in a warm room. So as long as it doesn't get too cold, sort of below sort of 18 degrees, as long as it's above that, around 20 to 22 is great. For most species, and most of the commonly kept species, absolutely perfect for them. And a lot of species out there are very easy to keep and breed. Now the lifespan is not long for a lot of species. And in fact, now a lot of species are not very long lived. Most species that we keep in captivity only live for around a year. And in that time they'll hatch out, they'll grow to adulthood, and they will reproduce. And a lot of them reproduce in various, various ways. One way is parthenogenesis, so cloning themselves. So that's with a female without a male. And some will mate with a male to reproduce. And there's even some, like these guys here, the Maclay Spectre, that can almost choose. So they can mate with a male. If they don't mate with a male, they will reproduce parthenogenically. So this is one survival technique that stick insects have. And it can be quite successful, even to the point that there's some species where males do not exist anymore. It's all parthenogenesis. Now, for most species of stick insect, their defence is their camouflage. So they blend into the foliage, to the, the twigs, the sticks, even sometimes the leaves. And, so, and they rely on that. But there are some species that have various ways of defending themselves. Other than that, some come in terms of with spines on their legs. So they'll perhaps uh, do a threat display where they'll rear up their back legs. And if anything gets in between them, they will scissor kick. And that can really, really hurt. And there's also species that will actually use chemical warfare. So will actually spray toxins of various degrees of potency. Some of them can really, really stink. Some of them can sort of irritate our skin as well. And that's again another great way of defence. And the ones that tend to use chemicals will actually be fairly brightly coloured or have some kind of startle coloration on them. Now some species do get quite big and that's important to take in account when keeping stick insects and make sure that your enclosure is tall enough for the species. And as a general rule we tend to say you want three times the height of the adult and that's to allow for molting and you want the food plant, whether that be bramble or whatever, Go right up to the top so when they molt they can hang from the top and you don't want too many lower sort of branches if you like so that they are encouraged to go up higher. 
So some species do display sexual dimorphism, so where the male and the female look different. So this is a male of a jungle nymph, and this is a female jungle nymph, so it looks very different, almost like a different species. So she is bright green, she has vestigial wings, so she can't fly with those, but she can rasp them. That makes a buzzing noise in terms of a threat display. Whereas the male was that mottled brown with full wings and can fly and is much smaller. And here we have an example of a species that uses chemical warfare. So we spray toxins. This is the black beauty stick. In fact, this is only a nymph, it's not so it's not fully grown yet at all. But as you can see, it does have some startle coloration in terms of a red mouth and bright yellow eyes. And when it's adult, it actually has bright red vestigial wings. So wings that are not used for flight, they're far too small, but they will open them out and they're bright red to flash a colour. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed that look at the world of stick insects. And there was just a few species uh, that I keep both privately and also within the zoo. So, stick insects are fantastic. Hopefully you'll agree with me there. They're one of the first exotic animals that I ever kept and bred as a child. So, and it's one of the animals that a lot of people get their introduction into keeping exotics is stick insects quite often. They are very popular. They've always been popular and continue to get more and more popular to this day. And there's a whole host of species available nowadays that are bred in captivity. So that is fantastic. So on that note, if you do keep any stick insects, let me know. Put that down in the comments. So, if not, are you looking to get stick insects? They are, I say, they're a fantastic group of animals to keep. And if you did enjoy this video, please do give it a thumbs up. Also, if you haven't yet, please do subscribe and hit that bell for notifications. And again, just leave me some comments as well. Well, boys, happy World Stick and Sec Day, the first ever World Stick and Sec Day. And hopefully we can make this a big, big thing, the celebration of the world of phasmids. Well, I'll see you guys next Sunday when I upload another video. Boys, take care, happy Halloween and happy World Stick and Sec Day. Goodbye.